Hi, and welcome to this section of the Basic Math Word Problem Tutor. And in this section, we're going to talk about word problems that deal with subtracting whole numbers. Whole numbers being numbers like 7 or 10 or 13. No fractions, no decimals, just whole numbers, and we're going to have to subtract them. Now, in the last section, the section before this one, we were talking about uh, problems that have you add whole numbers together. And in this section, we're going to concentrate on numbers on word problems that have you subtract the, the numbers and then things that you have to know when to subtract the numbers. So that's a real tricky point sometimes to figure out in a problem when you have to add these numbers together and when you have to subtract these numbers together and it's not always clear when you have to add them and when you have to subtract them. So we're trying to get some practice here through working some problems. But the number one thing you have to do, you have to be able to do this, it will make your life so much easier is just to try to understand what the problem is really asking you. And then when you understand what the problem's truly asking you and, and stop trying to fumble around with just working some math out, just understand what it's asking you, then you will understand if you have to add or subtract or multiply or divide or whatever it is, okay? So here are some tips. When you're dealing with problems that have you subtract whole numbers or subtract any numbers, okay? Usually, not always, but usually, there'll be some catchphrases in there that you can watch for. Things like this, how much more, okay, is, a, is one of the phrases. How much more uh, does this cost than that, okay? That kind of tells you, okay, well, if this costs $10 and this costs $5, how much more did this cost than that? Well, that tells you that that you're trying to find out what's the, what's the difference between the two things. How much more did it cost? It's not asking you to add it up for the total. It's not asking you to find the sum. It's just saying, how much more? So this costs this much, and something else costs this much. How much more is, how much is over here? So how much more is one of those words and key phrases you'll look for. Others are things like, how much less? How much less is uh, this length than that length, okay? Uh, how much larger? How much smaller? Okay. How many more? How many fewer? Things like this. Do you see the kind of general trend here? Uh, find the difference between these two people's ages. The difference of. The difference means taking something and subtracting something away, finding the difference between the two. Uh, what does the balance do at the cash register? So, uh, you know, uh, you have five dollars, you paid somebody, and you owe them ten dollars more. What does the balance do? You, you owe them some more money. What does the balance do? Um, how much is left over? Uh, how far above? How far below? How much further? So you see, subtraction by definition is when you take something and you subtract something off and you have something left over. You start with something big, you subtract something off, some, so you take this away from it, and you're left with this left over. That is what subtraction really is. It's taking something and subtracting some chunk of it, and you're left with something else. So that's why all of these phrases deal with things like how much more, how much less, how much larger, how much smaller. Because you're comparing two things, and you're not wanting to add them together. That would be the sum or the total or something like that. You're looking at how different are they, how how much bigger is this than that? So in order to find that, I'll need to take these two and subtract them together to find out how much bigger one is than the other, okay? Okay, we can talk about this all day, but I think uh, it's better to go ahead and work some problems and get some practice with figuring out how you're supposed to know when to subtract numbers in your word problems. So the first problem is, a, is goes like this. A boat is 27 feet long, a car is 13 feet long. How much longer is the boat than the car? Okay, let's read it one more time because we really need to understand it. A boat is 27 feet long, so a boat is, is this big. Let's just say this is 27 feet, okay? And a car is 13 feet, so the car is smaller. It's 13 feet long. How much longer is the boat than the car? So we said the boat was this long, and the car was this long. And it's saying, how much longer is the boat than the car? So if we start with the boat, and we subtract off this much from it, then we'll find out how much longer it was. So think about it. If you park a boat here, and you park a car that's smaller next to it, the boat is obviously going to be longer. And if you want to find out how much longer, you should just subtract off the length of the car. So let's draw a little picture. Uh, pictures are good. And you can do this on your homework, too. Here's a boat. you got to forgive me. I'm not a very good artist. Here's a boat. And we said it was uh, 27 feet 
long. This is 27 feet, okay? And then we have a car, okay, which is right here, but the car is only 13 feet long. So you see, you have a boat that's much longer than a car. This is 13 feet, this is 27 feet. And the problem says, how much longer, which is this part, how much longer is the boat than the car? So you see, you have to ask yourself, do I need to add these numbers together? Well, of course not, because it's not asking me for the sum total or the total length of these two things put together. There's nothing in here that talks about how much, how long they would be if they were together. This problem is talking about what is the difference between the two? How much longer is the boat? Remember, the car comes to here. Everything over here is how much longer the boat is. So in order to find this, you must subtract off the length of the car. You start with the length of the boat, you subtract off the length of the car, and what you will be left with is how much longer the boat actually is. So let's do that. You start with 27, 27 what? 27 feet. Don't forget what you're subtracting here. And we're going to take away or subtract 13 feet. Okay? We're going to subtract 13 feet, so we put a minus sign here. Okay? And when we subtract off the 13 feet, what we will be left over with, what, what will be left over will be exactly what the problem's asking you, which is how much longer is the boat than the car. Okay? So again, we start in the right-hand column. 7 minus 3, you can do... Uh, on your fingers, or you can just memorize it. Starting at 7, subtracting 3. 6, 5, 4. I subtracted 3, I got 4. 7 minus 3 is 4, so I just simply put a 4 under here. I'm done with that column. Now I move to the next one. 2 minus 1, I think you all know, gives you 1. So I have 14, and 14 what? 14 feet. So what this is saying is that if you have a boat that's 27 feet long, and a car that's 13 feet long, then the boat is actually 14 feet longer than the car, which is exactly what the problem says. It says, how much longer is the boat? The boat is 14 feet longer than the car. So all of the problems are going to have a similar flavor. They're all gonna ask you how much longer, how much shorter, how much more, how much less, how much bigger, how much smaller, how much taller, how much shorter, that kind of thing. You have phrases like that, it's asking you to subtract them to find out how much longer or shorter something is, uh, for example. So, let's go off and work another problem. Dave is 36 years old and Jason is 24 years old. How much older is Dave than Jason? So you see we have two people here. Dave is 36 years old and Jason is 24 years old. Okay, And Dave is obviously older than Jason. Okay, so the question is, how much older is Dave than Jason? So one way I like to do this, just to kind of make it totally clear, let's pretend this is Dave here, okay? And the problem says he is 36 years old. Okay, so what I'm going to say is this bar represents 36 years old. I'm just going to show you graphically what I'm talking about. This is Jason, and... He is only 24 years old. Okay? 24 years old. Okay? So you see Dave is older than Jason, and the problem says how much older is Dave than Jason? How much older? This is how much older he is. See, D Jason only comes to here, but Dave is older, and he's older by this much. So the only way you can find out how much this is is to subtract these two numbers. You have 36... 36 what? 36 years. And you're going to subtract Jason's age, which is 24 years. Okay, and you put the little minus there and you subtract. Okay, so when you take the 36 and you subtract the 24, what you're finding is how much older Dave really is, which is exactly what the problem is asking. Remember, I said how much older, how much younger, how much bigger, how much taller, things like that. How much older is Dave than Jason? So let's do the subtraction. Starting in the right hand column, 6 minus 4, I think you can do that in your fingers, 6 minus 4, starting at 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, okay? So I subtracted 4 and I got 2, so there's a 2 here. And then I'm done with that column. Move to the next column, 3 minus 2, uh, I think you'll re remember, is 1, okay? And this is obviously years, okay? 
36 years minus 24 years gives me 12 years. So what this is saying is that we, you know, we know from the problem that Dave is older than Jason. What this is saying is he's 12 years older than Jason, okay? So you have to subtract them in order to find the answer to that question. The next problem goes like this. You fill a five gallon bucket full of water. You then pour out three gallons of water into the grass. How many gallons are left in the bucket? So this is something we have experience with. You have a bucket, it's a five gallon bucket, and you fill it completely full of water so you have five gallons of water in it, okay? Then you walk over to the grass and you pour out three gallons of the water onto the ground. How much water do you have left? So you see how many gallons are left in the bucket. That is one of those key phrases that means subtraction. How much is left? Okay, remember that's one of those phrases, how much is left. But also, even, even more than looking for key phrases, just let's understand what the problem is saying. You start with five, you pour out three, so you're throwing something away, which is what subtraction is. You're not adding anything together. You're certainly not adding the five gallons to three more gallons. You're, you're taking five gallons and you're pouring out something. You're throwing it away. You're getting rid of it. So you want to find out how much is left. You must subtract those two numbers. So, if we were going to draw a picture, which is always a good thing, uh, here is a bucket, and this is before, okay, and it's totally full of, of five gallons, okay, of water in this bucket, and then afterwards, you pour out some water, and how much do you pour out? Well, the problem says, I mean, there's, whoops, I did something wrong here. Afterwards, I pour out some liquid, I'm left with some water left. How much did I pour out? Well, the problem says I poured out three gallons. Okay? So I started with five gallons, and I poured out three gallons. That's how much I actually dumped out. Okay? That's why it's empty here, because I dumped it into the grass. And I'm left with something, and in order to find out how much I'm left with, I must subtract them. Take my five, subtract out the three gallons that I threw on the ground, and I'm going to be left with however much I have. So I started out with five, five what? Five gallons, okay? And I subtract out three, three what? Three gallons, okay? And I'm subtracting these, and I will find out how much I have left over, okay? So just real simple subtraction on your fingers or in your head, five, and you subtract three more starting at five, four, three, two. I subtracted three, five minus three is two. So I'm left with two and two what? Two gallons. Okay? So, something you have experience with playing with the beach. Five gallons of water, pour out three gallons, I must subtract them, and I'll be left with two gallons. The next problem goes like this. A television costs $251, and you hand the cashier $260 to pay for the television. How much change should you receive? So this is a great example of needing to know how to do subtraction because you go into a store and uh, you're carrying $260. That's all you have. You see this wonderful television you'd like to purchase, but it costs $251. Uh, how much change should you receive? That's another key word, usually. That means you have to subtract these things. You give the person $260 but it only cost something less than that, $251 in this case. And so in order to find out how much change you will receive, you have to subtract those numbers together because your change is how much money left over that they have to give back to you, okay? So when you see how much change should you receive, you're probably going to have to subtract something, okay? If you wanted to draw it in terms of a picture, okay, because I'm, I'm very big on pictures, you give the cashier uh, $260. And that's, that's what this bar means. $260 is what you give the cashier. But the television actually only cost $251. Okay? So this is what you give the person, and this is what the TV costs, and it says how much change should you get. Well, the change is going to be, this is how much they owe you back. You pay for the TV this much money, but you give them this much, so you've overpaid for the TV, and you must get this much back. So the only way you can figure out how much is, is the difference between these two is just to do the subtraction. How much change should you receive? So 
It's $260. So I put dollars down, just to remind me. And I'm going to actually pay because the TV is actually worth $251. Okay, and so I just subtract those two. $260 minus $251. So I need to subtract these to find out how much, uh, how much change I need to get. Okay, so, so you're starting in the right hand column and you have a zero and a one and you know that you can't really take zero and subtract one from it. So here you have to go back into your, your skills and remember how to do this. You're going to have to borrow. Okay, and if this seems foreign or unfamiliar then you can go and review the uh, the uh, first through seventh grade math tutor that has a lot of these problems, but we'll do it step by step here as well. So in order to subtract these, you have to borrow. So you're gonna put a one, a little bitty one right there, making this a 10, but you can't just pull it out of nowhere. You have to take it from the next column. So I'm gonna turn this six into a five, okay? That's what I did. So this was a zero and I made it a 10. So I put a little one there telling me it's 10, but I have to take it from somewhere. So I scratch through the six and I make that one a five. And now I'm done. And now I need to do the subtraction. 10 minus 1, I think you'll all know 10 minus 1 is 9, so I put that down. I'm done with that column because I can subtract 10 minus 1. I couldn't subtract 0 minus 1, I had to do the borrowing. 10 minus 1 gives me 9. Next column, 5 minus 5. Remember, this 6 is gone. Once I scratch through it, you don't look at it anymore. 5 minus 5 gives me 0, okay? And 2 minus 2 gives me zero. So you see I've got two zeros here, but I really don't need them because zero, you know, minus zero is zero. So you just kind of get rid of them, okay? I was just doing that to show you. 10 minus one gives you nine. Nine what? Nine dollars. Now this makes sense because when you think about it, I gave them $260, but the TV only cost 251, and there's not much difference between these two numbers. There's only nine dollars difference. So if I hand them $260, they will give me nine dollars back. That is my change. The problem said, how much change should you receive? Usually that means you have to subtract the numbers in order to find that. Okay, the next problem goes like this. A house is 42 feet tall and the tree in front of the house is 17 feet high. How much taller is the house than the tree? Okay, so that's one of those phrases, how much taller? Remember we were talking phrases like how much taller, how much shorter, how much bigger, how much smaller. Things that compare two things together when they're different sizes, probably going to have to subtract. So a house is 42 feet tall, that's a big house. Tree is only 17 feet, that's a much smaller number. How much taller is the house? So we're going to have to subtract to find out how much taller it is. So let's draw a picture because like I said, I, I love pictures, it helps me understand what to do. The house is 42 feet tall, okay? Now in the front yard, there's a tree here, and this tree is uh, 17 feet tall, okay? So the house is obviously much taller than the tree, and the question is how much taller? So we're trying to find out how much taller is this house than this tree? And because we're comparing two things that are different sizes and we're trying to find out how much taller, we want to subtract off the, the height of this tree. We're gonna subtract this part off so that we're left with the difference. So we're gonna start with 42 what? 42 feet. And we're gonna subtract 17 what? 17 feet. And we're gonna subtract these two things together so we can find out how much taller the house really is. So we start in the, in the right-hand column. 2 minus 7. Uh, well, 2 is smaller than 7. So how do you do that subtraction? You're going to have to borrow, just as we did uh, last time. We're going to have to borrow. So the way to do that is, just like we did before, you put a little 1 here to remind you that that is now not a 2. It's a 12. You're going to make it into a 12. Okay? But you can't do that without doing something else. You're going to get rid of this 4, and you're going to make it a 3. Okay? So you're borrowing. Okay? You make this 2 into a 12, and in order to do that, you get rid of the 4 and make it a 3. Okay, now I can do my subtraction. In the right-hand column, 12 minus 7. Okay, let's do that, 12 minus 7. Starting at 12, subtracting 7 off, starting at 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I subtracted 7, I got 5. So I'm going to put a 5 here, okay? Again, one more time, starting at 12, subtracting 7. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five. Subtracted seven, got five. Done. Now go to the next column. This four is totally gone. You don't look at it anymore once you scratch through it. Now it's a three. Three minus two, I'm um, sorry, three minus one, I think you all remember three minus one is two. Okay, and so I have two, five, 25, what? 25 feet. Okay, so I have a very tall house, 42 feet high. I have a little short tree that's 17 feet high. How much taller is the house than the tree? It's 25 feet taller. That's this, 25 feet taller than this tree. That's what that problem is telling me. Okay, now here is an interesting problem, uh, and it goes like this. A ladder is leaning on the side of a house. The house is 37 feet tall. You're standing on the ladder 15 feet above the ground. How many more feet do you need to climb to reach the top of the house? So this is a great example of a very long looking problem that looks very complicated, but in the end you'll find out it's very easy. How do you make the problem easy for yourself? You have to understand what the problem's actually asking you. And don't just jump in here trying to add numbers or subtract them without understanding. You have to understand what the problem is really asking you. So you have to read it probably three or four times to in order to do that. So let's read it again. You have a house and you have a ladder leaning up on the side of this house. Okay, that's the first sentence. Done. I understand. Ladder on the side of the house. House is 37 feet high and uh, the ladder's up against the house and I'm standing on the ladder 15 feet above the ground. Okay. How many more feet do I need to continue climbing up? Because I'm, I'm looking up at the top of the house. I'm only 15 feet off the ground. I'm trying to climb up to the top here. How many more feet do you need to climb to reach the top of the house? Now, right away, the phrase, how many more feet, uh, should be one of those key phrases you're looking for. Remember, we were talking about phrases. How many more? How many fewer? How, how bigger? How much bigger? How much smaller? So here's comparing two numbers. How many more feet? How many more do I need to go? Okay, so you're definitely not adding things here. You're not t asking for the sum or the, the total or anything like this. You're, you're comparing two numbers and you're saying, how many more feet do I need to get to the top? So this is an excellent problem for drawing a picture. Here's a house, okay? Uh, it's just a square and this is a roof up here, okay? And this house is how tall? 37 feet, okay, to the roof, okay? Now there's a ladder right here, I'm going to say, and this is my ladder, okay? And this, uh, this ladder, I'm standing up on the ladder, and you're going to have to forgive me here. Here's my, here's my little happy self right there on the ladder, okay? But I'm actually only standing 15 feet above the ground. Now let's make sure this picture agrees with the, how, with the uh, problem. A ladder is leaning on the side of a house. The house is 37 feet tall. You are standing on a ladder 15 feet above the ground. So now I have my picture drawn. How many more feet do you need to climb to reach the top of the house? How many more feet, which would be this distance here, how many more feet? So if I take the 37 feet of the house and I subtract off the 15 feet down here, I will be left with what they're asking, which is how many more feet do I need to go? So if I start with 37 feet, Okay, and I subtract off 15 feet, okay, that's going to give me what they're asking for. Start with my big number, my 37, I subtract off my smaller number, which is the 15, that's going to give me this as an answer, which is how many more feet, that's what I need to know. So starting in the right hand column, 7 minus 5, I think you can convince yourself starting at 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, I subtracted 5 off and I got a 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. I'm done with that column. Now move over to the left. 3 minus 1, I think you'll all know, gives you 2. So it's 22 feet. Okay? So you've solved this problem. 22 feet. So what it means is if you have a, a house that's 37 feet high and a ladder and you're standing 15 feet off the ground, you must climb 22 more feet up to get to the top. And the final problem goes something like this. A car has enough gas to drive 57 miles. You drive the car to a park that's 17 miles away. How much further can the car drive before it runs out of gas? So you see it's another one of those keywords. How much further? Okay. Remember, how much bigger? How much smaller? How much shorter? How much taller? How much further? Okay. So we're looking at two numbers. The uh, car can drive 57 miles total before it runs out of gas. 
but you're not driving that far. You're only driving 17 miles. So you, you can still drive more because you've only gone 17 miles, but the car can go 57 miles. How much further can the car drive? So you have to subtract those two numbers to find out how much further the car can go. So if you were going to try to draw a picture for that, then you would do it like this. Or in one way you can do it like this. You could say car can drive 57 miles. That's what the length of this arrow means. Okay, it's just a just a length. Okay? Now, you actually drive you drive 17 miles. And the question is, how much further can the car drive before running out of gas? So how much further means you subtract this off and you'll be left with how much farther you can go. So let's do that. 57 what? It's 57 miles. Okay? And you're subtracting 17 what? 17 miles. And you're doing this subtraction so that you can take off how much farther, how much you've gone, so you know how much farther you can go before you run out of gas. So starting in the right-hand column, 7 minus 7, I think you all know is 0. 7, subtract 7 from it, gives you 0. Okay, 5 minus 1 gives you 4. Starting at 5, subtracting 1, gives you 4. So you're left with 40 what? 40 miles. Okay, and you know you're not supposed to add these numbers together because it's not asking you for the total distance traveled or it's not asking you for the, the sum or the the find the grand total or anything like that. It's simply saying how much farther can you drive? Okay, so in order to find that you have to subtract off how far you did go and this is how much farther you could have gone. So in this section we have tackled word problems involving subtraction of whole numbers which are very important, very useful. You're going to be looking for keywords and phrases like comparing the two numbers together. How much bigger is something? How much smaller? How much farther do you have to go? How much uh, uh, how much older is this person? How much younger is this person? How much, uh, you know, uh, more beautiful is somebody? Whatever. Something like this that compares two things together. And you're going to have to take those numbers and subtract them to find the difference between them. And that will be, in most cases, the answer to the problem. You just have to read the question, understand what it's asking you, so that you'll know what to do. And the math itself really isn't that hard once you can do that part.